What to look for in wine. Taste. After paying close attention to the appearance and the nose of the wine, we finally get a chance to taste it. Here, we will look for a number of different characteristics that will lead us to a final opinion of the wine. It is best to taste at room temperature because cooler temperatures can hide certain properties. Under taste, we have two basic categories, touch and flavor. How to taste a wine. Lightly swirl your glass. This helps to release some of the aromas as you bring the glass under your nose and to your lips. Take a comfortable amount of wine into your mouth. Gently roll the wine over different parts of your mouth and palate from front to back and side to side. You can try to make that silly slurping sound, drawing air across the wine if you want. Concentrate on what kinds of sensation you're feeling in your mouth and see if you can pinpoint their location. Then swallow or spit out the wine. Touch. The touch of the wine is the sensations your mouth experiences. Your mouth is designed to give you both pleasurable and warning signs. Wine will give you certain tingly, prickly, or warming feelings in different parts of your mouth and palate. This is because certain acids, sugars, and other components of the wine all affect the different areas of your mouth. Now, here I present a map of the tongue, where the basic components may be felt. Know that everybody is a little bit different. The map for me doesn't do much good because I feel things all over my tongue. In fact, I even feel things on my gums and my teeth, high tannins, for example, will stick to my teeth and I'll feel this dry chalky feeling. But everybody's a little bit different. So I use the basic map of the tongue because that's what many people are used to. Again, it's what you perceive that's important. Here's what we're looking for. Tannin. Tannins will leave a dry chalky sensation. Acetic acid creates a burning sensation. Acid. The tongue is usually most sensitive to acids on the side and on the tip but many people, like myself, will find it on their gums. Alcohol. If alcohol is too high, it will cause a burning sensation. When properly balanced, it creates sort of a false sweetness and a feeling of warmth. Sugar. Sugar can be a sticky or cloying effect that's usually more concentrated towards the center of the tongue, but some will find they're sensitive on all parts of the tongue. If this area interests you and you want to know more about it, pick up our What to Look For in Wine and in it, we have an exercise in touch where we use grapes, red wine vinegar, sugar, water, vodka, and other things and let you find out where are these mixtures affect your mouth and your tongue. Sugar is one of the most important components of the grape, for it's the sugar content at harvest that determines the potential alcohol of the wine. Glucose and fructose are the main sugars which make up what we call the must weight or specific gravity of the juice before it's fermented. Residual sugar is everything that's left after fermentation. When tasting a wine, one of the first things we notice is how dry or sweet it is. Sweetness is a sticky or cloying feeling you get in your mouth. Usually, the higher the residual sugar, the sweeter the wine will taste. But this is not always true because the levels of acid in the wine can change your perception. To take notes, simply record how sweet or dry you perceive the wine to be. When the wine first enters your mouth, how does it feel? Dry? No sensation of sugar. Slightly sweet? Just the first hint of sweetness. Medium sweet? More than a hint of sweetness. Sweet? The sugar is a definite characteristic of the wine. And very sweet? You'll only find these in dessert wines. Next look at the acidity of the wine. There are many acids in wine, and each has a different duty to fulfill. Tartaric, malic, citric, lactic all make up the different acids in wine. The combination is called total acidity, and this is what we're looking for right now. And when taking notes, what we're going to simply do is look to see what is the acid balance in the wine. When we give it A with two minuses, there's little or no acid. 
an A- minus is not as much acid as you would like. An A, the acid is balanced. An A plus has a little more acid, so it's probably a little young. An A with two pluses means that there's more acid that you'd really like, so it's either very young or it might be old and volatile. Tannin. Tannin is another powerful acid that leaves you with kind of a dry, chalky, or I would say dusty feeling after the wine has left your mouth. If the tannin is high, many times you can feel it while the wine is still in your mouth. When it's out of balance, especially in young wines, the wine will seem harsh and astringent. Most white wines do not have tannins. We record tannins like we do acids. Just with a T and two minus is little or no tannins. A T minus is not much tannin as you would expect. A T, tannin is balanced for what you would expect in that wine. A T plus is a little more tannin that you'd like. Maybe it's kind of young. And T++, well, there's a lot of tannin in there, and it's very young or just plain overdone. Now the alcohol. Next to water, alcohol is the most plentiful ingredient. During the fermentation, the yeast consumes the sugar, and the byproducts are alcohol and carbon dioxide. Think bubbles in champagne. The alcohol in table wines is anything from 8 to 15%. Fortified wines, which means they've had alcohol added to them, may contain up to 22%. When in balance, alcohol creates a warming and sweetish sensation. If the level's too low, the wine will feel watery or thin. If too high, the wine will burn and be hot. Okay, now let's talk about the body. Alcohol also contributes to the density or weight of the wine. It's what gives wine what we call body. This is possible because the alcohol molecules are larger and the water molecules are smaller and they can squeeze in between them. Here's how I used to show it in my live classes. Here we have a bin of basketballs. It happens to hold 36. Okay, now our same barrel holds 36 basketballs, but we fit 400 golf balls in between. Now, of course, barrel two is gonna be heavier. The mixing of water and alcohol is not exactly the same, but it's a similar concept. Here's another way of looking at it. If you blended one full barrel of water and one full barrel of alcohol, your final product would weigh the same, but your volume would be slightly less than two barrels. This is because the alcohol sits heavier in the water and you've created a heavier or denser liquid. Here's an easy way to feel the body in your mouth. First, take an ounce of water and roll it around in your mouth. Now spit it out. Now take an ounce of room temperature wine and roll it around in your mouth. See a difference? Now do this one more time, but use an ounce of some sort of fortified port or sherry. Now do you see a difference? And here's how we record it. Very light body, light body, medium light body, medium body, full body, and heavy body. Very light body feels very light in the mouth. Heavy body feels very rich and full in the mouth. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the balance of the wine. So acidity, alcohol, sugar, tannins, everything work together to form the wine structure and the sensations you feel in your mouth. But the trick is they must be in some sort of balance, otherwise your experience is gonna be sour, hot, or maybe downright unpleasant. If one component dominates, the wine is out of balance and the taste will be off. A wine may be too young, too old, or in shock from transportation, or it just might be poorly made. If I have a guess as to why it's off balance, I try to note that. Okay, now the flavor of the wine. We use the word flavor to describe the combination of everything you feel in both the nose plus all the sensations of touch. Your sense of smell actually accounts for about 85% of what people think of flavor. If you were to block both of your nasal passages from the front and the back, you could not tell the difference between vanilla and chocolate ice cream. You would be able to tell that it was cold, sweet, and creamy, but that is all you can taste. That is because both chocolate and vanilla are actually aromas read by nerves in your nose. To be a little more precise, chocolate and vanilla each release into the air specific esters which are read by highly sensitive nerve endings found in your olfactory bulb. This is why we roll the wine around in our mouth and hold it for a while. As you hold it there, learn to draw air across it, making those silly slurping sounds. You'll quickly find that as the wine warms up, 
it releases even more aromas than you'll find in a room temperature glass of wine. The touch of the wine can either enhance or diminish the flavor. High sugar will tend to enhance it. High acid will usually diminish it. To taste the flavors, take a comfortable amount of wine in your mouth and gently roll it around until it becomes warmer. Here's how we record our notes for flavor. Some prefer to use the list of aromas for flavor. This is the easiest way because most of us think of tasting raspberry rather than smelling it. In that case, your notes might read flavors of cherry, plum, chocolate, and whatever else you might find. But many times I find that if I find cherries in the aroma section, I'll probably find them here also. So instead of repeating, I prefer to blend aroma and touch together. So I use the terms poor flavors, if it's tart, bitter, or sour, or any way displeasing. Okay flavors, now this is my lazy term, when the flavor is neither good or bad, just okay. Good flavor describes a wine whose aromas and flavors are similar. Few, if any new ones appearing. Very good flavors, more aromas or flavors appear when the wine is in the mouth. Great flavors, here we have rich and luscious and mouth filling and many new aromas from and the flavors keep popping up. Others I might use for flavors are fresh, lively, simple, big, soft, robust, elegant, and whatever means something to you. To save time, sometimes what I'll do is I'll circle the aromas when I'm tasting, and then I'll put an ITM for in the mouth for new ones and list them later. And finally, the finish. The finish is everything you experience after you've spit or swallowed the wine. First look at the condition. Good qualities, clean, smooth, sweet, crisp, dry, full, rich, silky, complex, fresh, warming, others, or not so good, unclean, sharp, harsh, sour or bitter, flat, sweet, watery or thin, biting, simple, old or rotten, burns. What others? Also, the length of the finish. The length of the finish is simply how long you can taste the flavors once the wine has left your mouth. As soon as we spit or swallow, one counts by seconds how long they experience the flavors. Do not count the cloying of the sugar or the tingling of the acid, just the actual flavors of the raspberry tea, oak, and such. I might add, it's fair to lick your teeth and gums and make sure you always do this. Then record, no finish, zero seconds, short finish, one to two seconds, medium finish, three to five seconds, long finish, six to 10 seconds, a lingering finish, will go 11 seconds and more. Many times when our students were trying this particular exercise for the first time, many were amazed how short and lousy, that's their words, so many wines really are. They learn very quickly that too many wines rely on sugar to carry the wine and to make it seem full and rich, when actually it was just kind of sweet and sticky. As one put it, I might as well be sucking on sugar cane. The most important component of the finish is the wine's ability to keep producing more pleasing esters. These are what we smell and what gives off the wine's true flavors. The longer the finish, the better the wine is showing. Just know there are many things that can influence the finish. High acids leave it sharp, tart, or short. Sugar can fool you into thinking the finish is longer than it actually is. Acetic acid makes the wine finish sour. And sometimes in a wine that is just beginning to turn, this might be the first time you notice it. Alcohol, when combined with concentrated aromas, produces a longer finish. Review your observations of the body, tears, and legs. As you saw earlier, wines with higher alcohol cling to the glass. They will do the same in your mouth. Therefore, a light-bodied wine will dissipate quickly, whereas a full-bodied wine lingers. And if the aromas are plentiful enough to back up the wine's density, you should find a wine whose finish lingers on and on, sometimes for minutes. Final conclusion. The finish is your final assessment of the wine. It is one of the most important because it is the taste the wine leaves with you. We hope you're able to use the tools that we've given you here in what to look for in wine to help you to find the best wine has to offer. Most importantly, have fun with it and don't go overboard. Remember that wine is truly a part of the overall dining ambiance. Just like music, it helps to make the evening even better.